Start it out of the box. Start it out of the box. So, you just so, so, so the arm, arms out. will be in, in level. What's that? I said the arms will be level. All right. So and why we need a tablet? It has to be connected. Yeah, and so a quick note while, while Stan's doing that is you have to have a new tablet. So if you have, say, an older iPad or whatever, it won't, it won't necessarily work. Can you do it with phone? Yes. Yeah, but again, it, like this big. Yeah. but it also it can't be like an iPhone three or something. It has to be a, yeah, a at least last, an iPhone five. Yeah. And a, yeah. So within the last and, year. And a six plus is better. Mm, last year and a half. Yeah, the newest, the newest of whatever would work. Of uh, you know. Always. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I already demonstrated. You when you once you take this out of the box. Um, you, I typically don't keep batteries in it uh, when right. I store it, and it's going to be in its travel mode for me. Some people have a box that allows the craft to be in a landing mode, just as as. No, ours now. ours has to be in travel mode to fit in our box. Right. So New box. I I take it out, and um, I will put a battery in. But I also inspect the aircraft to make sure there's no cracks. Um, just to make sure that the motors, you know, have no grit in them, there's, there's no issues, and <clears throat> just do a visual inspection, just like you would a, an airplane if you were a pilot. Uh, you've got your transmitter out, and you hook up your, your iPad or your iPhone. I can do either one with this. So back up one step. All right, you sorry. actually have to download the Go. DJI Go app. I, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, so this is, I thought we were just flying, but right, right, right. If you, um, the first but, time, the first right. time. So the first time you you you've already downloaded the DJI uh, Go. It's called DJI Go app. And here's the little icon, from, and it's on Apple, and it's uh, free. It's absolutely yeah. free. So you download that, and then you can click on it, and you're going to get a screen. Typically, you'll get a a welcome screen once you when you crank it up. Uh, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Does it have to be Apple or can you no. use Android? No, Android, Android it's, yeah. it's compatible with Android or Apple. Well, it seems like but you just want to make sure you have the right cable though. <laughs> yeah. Yes. As we've discovered at times. Yeah, right. True. So again, you want this you you should be very familiar with your controller and how it operates, obviously. Make sure your controller's been charged previously and have full charge. And this controller has various functions, just like they all do, in which you can go. Um, so when you're G powering it on, what, where are those settings at? This setting will be uh, all the way up, which will be in GPS mode. And then if you, it's got three functions, so GPS, ADDI, and then F, which is stands for um, yeah. Well, I forgot to because sometimes well, free fly you know, or I something. I don't even think it's the right. The, the initial doesn't mean anything. I know. It, it's for uh, it's for home lock and, and for your for uh, those other features. Yeah, some other IOCs. Yeah, it, it is an IOC. I added feature. in to right. Lock. Yeah. Um, and then of course this has a gimbal function, and it it is programmable, so you can you can change it in the software to do various things, and on this side. Uh, Again, uh, the same thing. You've got buttons for uh, to play uh, video, to take pictures. Um, I will. Here's the video. I've got it marked on here. Video, on and off video, and you can do it on the app as well. And then here is taking pictures. It depends on how many fingers you want moving on this right. while you're flying. And then there's another little button here that's a playback button. So if you want to see what you just recorded, you can do that. Not in flight. <laughs> Not in flight. Right. So would your co-pilot have the same setup? He would. Uh, it's, so a, it's a duplicate. Set. Yeah. It's an absolute duplicate. Okay. It's just that he his is programmed as, a, as what they call a slave okay. versus a master. Now, I have a second one that's actually been sent off to this guy in Florida to, to oh, yeah. FPLR. Oh, you can do that by yourself. 45 um, minutes. I'll show you. <laughs> What's FPLR? Well, that's the regular guy. That, that, yeah, it that, adds that. miles to transmit. You get a, you get your video and your command signals extend four or five miles. The main thing is I just want, more juice, or what's he doing? Different well, signals. What he, what, what he did, what he, what he's doing, it, 
what he's doing is actually changing the wiring inside to heavier gauge wiring. Uh. And he's got these. Uh, That's Tony? Pipe, huh? Tony? Yes. You, not Tony. No, no, no. Not Freddie Del, uh, Del Rosio. Is it with LSR FPV? Long range? No, no. Oh, okay. Because no. you don't need to change the wiring internally. Yeah, well, he's. they've had a lot of success. I've, I've okay. been following him. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. it's, and it's relatively inexpensive. Yeah. And my main thing is not so much getting further, but just getting a more solid signal yeah. when yeah. I'm in a world, right. when I'm in a, yep. uh, an area that uh, around buildings and, yep. you know, lots of signal interference. But as it is, I, I've many times gone to two miles on these things yeah. and had Because it tells you on the screen where, how far away you are. Mm. Yep. And it also tells you its signal strength. Mm -hmm. So then we, then prior to firing it up, we're gonna hook up our camera and gimbal. And it tells you there's a there's a white little marker that matches the white marker here on the front of it. Mm -hmm. Oh right. You can use it. And it just locks into place. And it sure that does. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure it's locked. You can be up next. You're good. So you powered the transmitter on and you powered up the app? I haven't powered the transmitter. Oh, okay. But I will. And it's on these, you power the transmitter. You hit it. You hit it once, and then you hit it and hold it for a few seconds, and that that'll light it up. If you just hit it once, real quick, it will not turn it on. Yeah. Same thing with the battery. Once, and then hold it. And same same button function. Same yeah. button function as it. Once. Mm -hmm. And then this is a visual check of the uh, battery status. Battery. Mm -hmm. The second time it powers up. If you don't do anything, it turns itself on. And okay. then, and then of course. Actually, prior to doing this, I, I, for demonstration purposes, I mean, obviously, I'm not putting props on inside, but prior to right. turning it on, I would have, had, I'd have it on the ground, I'd have props on it, and I, I'd be away from it. And then you want to go through, uh, if you're, if this is your first time flying it, you're going to calibrate the compass. And I can sh demonstrate that inside, although it won't calibrate we, inside. You got to yeah, hold it, and we huh? stand, and we twist, we sort of spin Absolutely. around. Because it's only doing a magnetic, so. But the but this room is kind of. No uh, magnetic. Just keep away from a whole lot of other metal. It's, it's giving me a lot. Of You're gonna get rebar. I'm getting all kinds of compass there right now. I know. So let's see if it it takes. It, um, so you're gonna. I'm you're almost going, right. Enabling compass calibration. Okay, so I'm. At, it says compass calibrate. It says abnormal. Yeah. Calibrate. We've got a lot of metal. Okay. So we just should perform the function? Right. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So one 360 degree turn and you get a status change in either There's the green light or on there. And you go nose down, yeah. 90 degrees straight down and do the same rotation. Now if you're in Australia, you go counterclockwise. <laughs> <laughs> and then it should blink twice. There you go. There so you as go. long as it's blinking like that, it should have taken. If it goes, it'll take on the screen. And it says recalibration needed. Yeah. So if you do that wherever you fly and you get that signal three times, move to another location. If you get that signal again that it doesn't calibrate, you're in a really bad magnetic anomaly. And I carry a meter to read magnetic anomalies and electromagnetic. I mean, you can be in a, if you're in a parking garage right. or concrete that has rebar. I mean, you have to really think about where you're at. Yeah, well, always look at your environment, your flying environment. And you have to do that every time? Every no. time you move. Every I time say. you, well, they recommend every time you move. I, I don't, don't teach do, them bad habits. Okay, uh, but there's some. I mean, a lot of people have been flying these for a long time. If like if I go to my local park, which I've been flying all the time, yeah. and then I go uh, a couple hundred yards away, I don't recalibrate. Oh yeah, that's different. But if you right. power down, put it in your vehicle, and drive away, and then come back to the same spot, mm -hmm. yes. the aircraft's been through whole different other magnetic fields. Mm -hmm. So don't assume it works. This mm -hmm. these inspires. Pretty much tell you no. You have to calibrate the compass now. But, mm -hmm. but with our systems that you guys are going to be working with, do it every. When I go time. to new locations, I recalibrate. It takes mm -hmm. ten seconds. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, that was that was it. That was yeah. it. And it, it until it get bigger, you won't you, know, <laughs> it, you won't get a lot of drift. It'll it'll really stay rock steady, and that's that's a really important feature. Stan, can I throw one thing in? Sure. When you're uh, when you're setting it up and setting the aircraft down to take off. You want to look around and, and see that it's, a, it's memorizing its waypoint. So you want to make sure you're in a right. spot. So if, if it had to fly back on its own, 
you want it to be a good spot for it to land by itself, not right, right next to right. something that it could be off five feet and hit, right, etc. So when you're just, right. you really, yeah, yeah, but this is you know you want to look around and give it a little bit of space so that if it was landing itself. Don't assume it's going to, although it's pretty darn good, don't assume it's going to be exactly there. Right. Give so yourself a little room. Does this one tell you it's marked as home location? It, it hasn't in here because we have no signal. Yeah, I know, but they but will tell yeah, you on this screen. It'll tell you on this screen, on right, right there where the arrow is, because that's telling you where the aircraft is. But it'll tell you there will be an H there, and it says home lock. Mm -hmm. So that when you've got home lock, you know you're safe to fly. And it actually gives you a voice. It says yes. home lock recorded, safe to fly. So it's 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 uh, it has some redundant features in here that makes it really easy to to work with. So you can switch back and forth between camera view and map view, and you can actually download a Google map and uh, and then get your. Uh, and have that recorded on there and fly through the Google Maps. Right, which is important because for a lot of our stuff, we don't have the cell phone capability on the on the those guys. So you want to set up ahead of time, right? Get the maps ahead of time, cache them. Right. Yeah. This this has cell phone capability, but I'm not getting any signal in here, so it's uh, I'm not pulling up the map. The, the older versions of these flight systems are compatible with Mac and, and uh, PC, so you can fly with a laptop in the field and do the exact same thing. Even though there's somebody flying it, mm -hmm. it'll fly autonomous waypoints from a laptop. Okay. So this is an add-on module. Mm -hmm. Now I'll let you talk about antennas and, and how they operate. Is that no, I, no, no? The, the function, like, just your pre-flight checklist okay. before you get into operation. So, again, we're looking at we're looking at number of uh, satellites that we've got. We make sure it's got home lock. We, we also it's important to make sure that you have uh, a decent number of satellites. Um, I was explaining to Sean that in the Inspire now picks up Russian satellites as well as American satellites. So I tend to get anywhere from 14 to 20 satellites, yeah. which is a very strong signal. So what's a decent number? What would be your threshold? Never. If it's telling you it doesn't, it's got five or less, never fly. Um, with the Phantom, six was the minimum. Yeah. Uh, it won't even Phantom, let you transition. With these, I, I, I wouldn't fly less than nine or ten. Mm -hmm. It just... Um, it's just such a rock solid signal when you get uh, that many satellites. Yeah, the difference between these aircraft, this is a single GPS protocol, US standard, mm -hmm. and the new ones are GLONASS, Asia, US. So it, it looks for all of those satellites in the whole spectrum. So you got much better resolution for positioning. Mm -hmm. the, some, of the, some of the data that it's going to have in here is going to it's going to tell you what your, your, uh, your signal strength is for your video. It's going to give you a battery output for your main battery. It's going to give you a, a signal strength between the receiver and the uh, transmitter. It gives you uh, all your camera readings across here. And I can actually pull up uh, aircraft status here. Mm -hmm. and here it says uh, flight records, compass error, it's giving us right now. But then it tells you the gimbal is normal, radio channel, quality is good, and you can actually pull up the screen doesn't come up. It says flight mode Andy right now, RC mode 2. That's US. Yeah, that's US mode. Throttle on the left, pitch roll on the right. If you go to mode 1, your brain's not going to be able to right. catch up. And here, on the aircraft battery, I can actually close that up. I can actually go to individual cells and, and look and make sure that I don't have any uh, bad cells that I'm going to have to worry about with this thing cutting off mid-flight. Battery life, it tells me 93%, times charge 29 times, gives you temperature of the battery. And here it lets you set your low battery warning. So I can actually physically set it to 30%, 20%, 10%, whatever I want. And it'll give me that warning. It'll, it'll give you a warning, and then it'll let you suck down to what the bottom threshold. And right. Do there's a a actually, there's a second setting, which is called critical battle, uh, battery warning, and that I have that set to 10%. Now, for you guys, don't have these magic flight logs, so you're going to have to do paper records That's for right. a while. Which I had encouraged. On the bottom, you get flight parameters. You get height, and that's uh, AGL, uh, 
above ground level. And of course, FAA, everybody's talking about 400 feet AGL. And then you get vertical speed, horizontal speed, and, uh, and then it will give you uh, feet uh, distance uh, that you're More flying. They've gone away, yeah. Camera, I mean, gives you all your camera settings and allows you to change those settings in the air. So here, I've got, you've got ISO, you can be on full automatic, like on lot, you can be on speed, on shutter speed, and change those, depending on what you're filming. You can be on total manual, so you can be changing ISO, your shutter speed, and, uh, and, and any other values you want. So depending on what your, your objective is, and what the kind of lighting you have, will depend on how those settings are. So you check all of this before you fly? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I, I do it before I even I, I, I get ready to fly because I, I want to make sure I don't spend a lot of my battery time yes. going through this and this, using... This uh, is parasitic. You can place your batteries playing with it, which takes away flight time. All right. Here you've got uh, this other menu has the type of photo you want. You can go single shot, you can go uh, high definition, you can go multiple uh, shots, you can go what they call AEB, which um, stands for uh, auto exposure bracketing. So you can do that either in three or five shot increments. It allows you to take these phenomenal pictures of, and get real high detail. And then you can do time shots. It also has an area where if you want a histogram for your video, for those of you in photography, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, overexposure warning. So if I hit overexposure warning, you can see what it does. It gives you a zebra effect. So it tells you when you have too much light or brightness. I don't like to keep that on though, because I like to be able to. I shoot. It allow, this allows you to shoot in JPEG or RAW or both combined and most photographers like to shoot in RAW because it allows you to make infinite adjustments afterwards. And then you can have quick reviews of anything that you've seen. If you want to have an automatic quick review, then you can set that. And you can format your, your card on here. So this has an SD card that's located inside the camera and I typically put in a 64 gigabyte card and download that, that information after every, after every uh, not after every flight, but after every day. series of flights, after every day. And I take that information, download it to a hard drive, and then I'll, I'll reformat the card. And video, it, again, it's just like, uh, like your fixed fixed frame, you can change your video format, your video size. This shoots in 4K. It also shoots in, uh, it shoots 4K 30 frames per second, and it shoots in 4K 24 frames per second, 2.7K or 1080. So you have a lot of variety here if you want to shoot uh, 60 frames per second or 1080 and 60 or 120, you can, you can take that and get slow motion out of it much better. So there's a lot of advantages if you're in photography. So if you're flying this as a single operator, FPV, what function mode do you put the gimbal in so that it flies forward and stabilizes itself? Well, I don't have it in FPV. I have it in follow. They call it follow mode. Right. So if I rotate it, it's only going to follow the instructions off the slave or is it going to stay oriented forward? No, no. If I, if I rotate that no, gimbal? If I, no, if I fly the aircraft. Oh, if you, no. If you fly the... If you fly the aircraft, that gimbal is going to stay in the same direction. Yeah, so it's going to stay stable. So that's a single operator. Right. So wherever he points it from his controller, no matter what the aircraft is doing, it's going to keep looking forward. It'll adjust for some of the yaw input, which you see it's got about a 20 degree yaw compensation for abrupt wind shift or turbulence. So it can suck up. That's the third axis. If he put the slave version on it, this thing will go 360 degrees wherever the camera guy wants to look at it independent of what the aircraft pilot is going to do. Correct. So those are the mode choices you have for single and dual operator. 
I've had, I've, I've flown this in 30, 30 knot winds and gotten completely stabilized video out of it, which is just, it's pretty remarkable how well this can handle, this gimbal can handle, particularly the, even the bigger gimbal can handle that kind of wind. And I'm always amazed at the, the pictures I can still get out of it. Did you shoot mostly video or still? Still. Yeah, I'm shooting mostly stills. I tend to, sh when I shoot all this video, then I get lazy. And <laughs> it's, it's the processing that you need for it. And Especially when you start crunching Pix4D data. Yeah. yeah, and we, have, we haven't talked about uh, the, this very much in terms of the photography aspect, but I think you guys have all seen this when you watch some of these older videos, and it looks, they call it the jello effect. It, it, that's from uh, unstabilized cameras and just the vibration of the platform. And um, so the new generation of these gimbals, these camera holders, uh, do a great job of controlling for that, which used to be a significant problem. So there's there's a lot more features in here, and I, and you, you it'll it gets kind of mind-boggling, but because I think uh, when you're just learning this, you don't yeah, yeah, need yeah. to understand yeah. all these features. I mean, it has auto takeoff, auto land. There's a huge amount of features. I think one of the best things that's ever come out of this whole industry, particularly as this has progressed, is the return to home feature, in which if you lose uh, RC connection it will come home and I've lost it numbers and numbers of times I can't tell you how many times that I've sat there and said okay is this thing coming back <laughs> I can't see it is it coming back so on the sure. Inspire can you control the altitude it climbs to before it does a return to that's home that's correct see that your Phantom was fixed at 60 feet right so with with the Inspire on the return to home function and, and it's in here you put it's programmable I can set it uh, Pretty much, let's see, I think it goes up to 500 meters I can set it to for a return to home. I, I set it, I look at the Obstacles, area, yeah. I observe yeah. the area that I'm flying in to make sure that I'm going to be over, I'm going to be able to come above any obstacles if this thing's coming back direct to me. Now, if you fly to, let's say you fly to 300 feet, but you're set at 150 feet, it will still come home at 300 feet it's going to come home at, at that higher default altitude because that's what you get, you've gone up to and it knows yeah, it's better. Below, it's above its low for a show. Right. And it worked. It works unbelievably well. And any time during that return to home function, you, if you get reconnection, if you see that you've reconnected, you can actually t take over again and land it yourself or, or, or just take you control. You have to flip a switch or touch your cab or... Yeah, there's, there's actually, there is a switch and it's right here on this, on here, it's a button. We just press the button and it... That's the return. That's the return. If you want to regain positive control, Same. you just push the button again. Push the button again, or you just, all you have to do is actually, uh, you can and just take control. Just start it gives you an control. audio too, I think. What's that? It gives you an audio when it takes over. Sometimes when you're in that adrenaline rush, you don't hear that little... Yeah, I, I, I know on a Phantom 3, it gives you an audio. Yeah. When the come on feature turns on. Right. Yeah, so it does. Just, just to let you know. Right. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, so last year we worked on students making up their own um, sort of customized cheat sheet flight manuals, but all these different units have, like, for example, DJI, they have different meaning, right? So the light yes. color, the frequency at which they're blinking, all that's giving you information uh, separate from, or in addition to whatever else and that's you're getting. Right. And, and when you're looking at this, um, and honestly, I forgot what right, it was. There's a lot of them. The <laughs> but when it's blinking rapidly green, it's good to go. That one I know. <laughs> so um, All green, all good. Right. And as, as you saw, it was yellow when we were doing the compass calibration. Yep. And then it, as soon as he finishes yeah. 360, it turned to green, did it again, and it flashed. So this also has orientation lights. It does have orientation what lights. What color are the front orientation lights? The front's going to be, uh, what's that? Are they red? Yeah, they're red. Yeah. It's red and green. DJI. Wow. Yeah, DJI goes yeah. red in the front. Yeah, green in the rear. Yeah. yeah. Yep. To make it easy Any for you guys. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> to make it easy. Yeah.